We're back with the breaking news. The full House of Representatives is set to vote this week on a resolution outlining the process for the impeachment inquiry going forward. This comes as today a former White House official is defying a congressional subpoena to testify in the impeachment inquiry, setting off a new challenge for Democrats attempt to wrap up this current stage of the process within the next few weeks. CNN's Jessica Schneider has the story. A significant no-show on Capitol Hill as Charles Kupperman ignored a congressional subpoena. Witnesses like Dr. Kupperman need to do their duty and show up. Kupperman was Deputy National Security Advisor and John Bolton's number two at the White House. He filed a lawsuit Friday asking a judge to rule whether he had to comply with the House subpoena. Kupperman saying today all parties would want judicial clarity. His attorney argued Kupperman was caught between competing demands from House Democrats and the White House, which has told current and former officials not to testify, arguing the impeachment inquiry is illegitimate. I think we can infer from the White House opposition to Dr. Kupperman's testimony that they believe that his testimony would be incriminating of the president. Democrats are eager to hear from Kupperman, who was listening to that July 25th phone call between President Trump and Ukrainian President Zelensky, where Trump pushed Ukraine to investigate the Bidens. Kupperman's no-show also calls into question whether testimony from other White House officials will move forward. We're going to work with Congress and answer all their questions. Outgoing Energy Secretary Rick Perry is now walking back what he said earlier this month, telling the Associated Press he will not testify before Congress, even though he's been subpoenaed. Now he's calling the inquiry illegal and improper. We have what are called uh, the three amigos. EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland has referenced Perry as one of three officials, along with Kurt Volker, who were in charge of U.S. policy toward Ukraine. Perry also now says he asked the president to make the July 25th phone call because it was important for the country's energy needs and had nothing to do with the Bidens. Meanwhile, Vice President Pence is towing the White House line, denying any quid pro quo that predicated military aid or a White House meeting on Ukraine's promise to investigate the 2016 election or the Bidens. What I know is that the transcript of the president's call with President Zelensky shows that there was no quid pro quo. He did nothing wrong. And Democrats today threatened to hold Charles Kupperman in contempt for defying that subpoena. And of course, the question now remains, Jake, will others who are scheduled to testify this week actually refuse? Jake. All right, Jessica Snyder, thanks so much. Uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter, who's been the target of President Trump's attacks for, for weeks. Uh, first of all, before we get to what Hunter said to ABC News today, we should note, President Trump's attacks against Hunter Biden and Joe have been full of lies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's just a fact. But it also is just a fact that this kind of board appointment to the son of a sitting vice president is something that a lot of good government groups take issue with. Right. Um, so Hunter Biden did an interview with ABC News. He tried to dismiss any questions about his time on the board of a Ukrainian gas company uh, during his father's vice presidency. Take a listen. What do you say to people who believe this is exactly why people hate Washington? A vice president's son can make money in countries where this? your father is doing official no, government but by the business. Way, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. I made a mistake in, um, in, in retrospect as it related to um, creating any um, perception that, that was wrong. And so, therefore, I'm taking it off the table. And, you know, Ukrainian prosecutors have said that they know of no evidence of any criminal wrongdoing by Hunter or by Joe. But Amy Robach in that interview is right. This does look swampy. Uh, dare any Democrat bring this up in the debate? I don't think so. And I think what Democrats have done in the last couple of weeks has been smart, which is drawing the contrast between the kind of administration they would run in terms of ethics and what, what role their children might play, what, either inside or outside, versus with Trump. And, you know, Hunter, I thought, was fine in that interview. He was he was himself. It was unpolished, which I think that's who he is, which I think was a good thing. You know, and his point about, you're right, it's, it may seem swampy, but can we also remember this happened years ago? So And people at the time did express some concern. Concern. But, you know, I think there's a difference between what is happening right now in this moment with impeachment, with what we're learning every single day, and the very real questions we have about the Trump children, than something that happened years ago where there's been no wrongdoing proven. Biden now has a whole talking point on his ethics plan that he can talk about. So on the subject of the Trump children, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted in response to Hunter Biden's interview, quote, dumpster fire at Biden HQ. 
it is impossible for me to be uh, or any of the boards I just mentioned, on uh, any of the boards I mentioned, without saying that I'm the son of the vice president of the U.S. I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that if, uh, that if my name wasn't Biden, Hunter Biden. So Donald Trump Jr. quoting Hunter Biden, acknowledging that things came his way because of his father. Your response? I just, God bless Donald <laughs> Trump Jr. Just, just bless his little heart. And I, I, it just because it's just it's just indescribably stupid for him to inject himself into this story when he has business deals all around, when he has uh, tra traveled and, and promoted uh, his his company, his father's company, his eponymous company. It's just it's just maddening. I, I think what 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 his father does that's very ingenious and evil is he finds where you're most vulnerable. You know, I don't need to tell you, Joe Biden has buried a daughter and a son and a, and a wife and family is the most important thing in his life. And so he takes it, picks on a member of, of Joe's family. Joe's got to resist answering in kind. I wouldn't advise Joe to attack Donald Trump Jr. Focus on the president. Joe's greatest calling card is I'm the guy that can beat Trump. So when you hear Hunter, there's seven things you do. Attack, 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 attack. But attack Trump, not his kids. I uh, retired from Marine Corps. Uh, in January, it's now November. Uh, I was not in any way uh, part of the campaign. And I uh, got a call after the election, <clears throat> watching uh, a college football with my wife on a Saturday afternoon. I got a phone call from someone uh, who claimed to be the future chief of staff. I never heard his name. I understand Reince was here last year. He was. Yes. You know, an unusual name. I never heard it before, and I had to be convinced it was actually someone that was. You thought they were trolling you. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he did say, you know, that um, we'd love to have you come up and talk to the president-elect, and, and I'd love to send a, you know, I will send an airplane down for you. I'm, I was living in Virginia, am living in Virginia. And I said, well, if you're serious, I mean, I'd love to send an airplane for you kind of guy, so if you're serious, I'd drive up there in New Jersey. I'm not, my wife said, what was that all about? And again, I had no desire, no plan of any kind to ever work again. Um, and, I, and I said, well, and I told her the story of who I thought it was, and she said, I said, what do you think? And she said, well, uh, you know, if we're nothing else as a family, uh, we're certainly a family of service, so if they think they need you, uh, you got to at least give them a, give them a hear or, or a hearing. And she said, besides all of this quality time we're spending together in retirement, it's not really the way it's cracked up. <laughs> so I went to them. And uh, at this point, in my view at least, and I was asked by the campaigns, most military senior officers were asked by campaigns if they would sign a letter of support or appear at the convention or something like that. To me, uh, that's politics. I don't think senior military people should be involved in politics uh, just because of who we are and who we were, better way to put it. Um, but in my view, the president-elect was asking me to be involved in the governance of this great country, and to me there's a vast difference. And uh, so ultimately, uh, I was uh, recruited into the job, went through the transition such as it was, uh, well, transition, and then uh, was, I think, the first or the second to Madison, I think, or, uh, to be sworn in, approved by the Congress. I think I had 87 votes, gay votes. Uh, and, uh, and uh, I was in that job at DHS for six months, and the president called me one day and said, I really would like you to come over uh, and, uh, and be the chief of staff. I need to do that. And so, again, uh, service being what it is, I saluted and did that for 18 months and left. Paramedics pronounced the man in his 50s and from Carlisle deceased at the scene at 1646 hours. The man was reported trapped at about 2.20 a.m. today, and a rescue operation was launched, and a multi agency group was later convened. The highly complex rescue operation has evolved agencies including police, Cumbria and Lancashire Fire and Rescue Services, Northwest Ambulance Service, the Coast Guard, Mountain Rescuers and Specialist Contractors. All agencies worked as quickly as possible to try to rescue the man. The operation involved road closures, the use of drones to assess the scene and a helicopter and a cherry picker brought in from Glasgow. All this was done with the aim of bringing the man down safely whilst maintaining the safety of emergency services staff. The man was recovered after a cherry picker was used to transport specialist technicians and specialist firefighters trained to work at height to the top of the chimney to lower him down. The thoughts of the emergency services and partners are with the family and friends of the man. 
specialist welfare police officers are supporting his family at this difficult time. An investigation will commence into the circumstances into how and why the man was on the chimney and the constabulary will be informing Her Majesty's Coroner.